It's so hot in here. Fucking, we're recording in hell, basically. Pretty much. The, the tiniest room. In that's fully carpeted. No windows. No fans. No aircon. It's fucking hot. It's we're sweating our faces off. It's hot as Egypt. Ooh, Ooh. Egypt. <laughs> To drag to, to hell. hell. <laughs> <laughs> Boil along with us in the Egyptian desert. As we discuss the Egyptian gods. Oh god, the gods of Egypt. All I know basically is my thing with the Egyptian gods is there was a lot of incest. There was a like lot most of incest, gods. yes. They have Anubis with mummification, because yeah. mummification interests me a lot. Ooh. And Horus, the one with the falcon head. Yeah. That kind of spoke so, to pharaohs. Today we're only going to talk about a handful of them because there are 2,000 plus Egyptian gods and it would be impossible for us to sit here and talk about all of them. Well, fuck. <laughs> so we're going to talk about just a few. A few of the main ones that a lot of people should know. Mm, yeah. Well, you're going to tell me about those because I know nothing and you're the Egyptian here. Yeah. This is your background. You tell me more about them. Okay, so, um, as I said, there's over 2,000 deities or gods or goddesses. Um, but some of the ones that people may know are, like, Isis, Osiris, Horus, Amun, Ra, Hathor, Basset, Anubis, and Set. Isn't Amun the one that's from the Mummy films? Yes. Yes. Yay! Yay for they... cultural appropriation. <laughs> All I remember is Amun, Amun Ra or Amun Tet or yeah, something so like that. Yeah, Amun Ra. Um, so there's and that's where it gets a bit complicated. Is because there's the gods, and then there's kind of like like have you watched Steven Universe? Yeah. There's kind of like the the merged gods, like when the crystal gems merge. So there's the gods, yeah. and then there's Amun Ra or Amun Tet. Yeah. So like they they merge, and so like Power Rangers. Power Rangers didn't really do that. Okay, fine. Dragon Ball Z okay. fusion. Ha fusion. Ha. Oh yeah. well, Dragon Ball Z had Anubis and that in them in one of the later movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Goku battled the Egyptian gods. More cultural appropriation. <laughs> there we go. Uh, My references for Egypt all come from pop culture, mainly. Um, so today, I just like I said, I just want to talk about a handful of them. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to focus on one messy ancestral family tree, which will cover Your a, good, own? a good handful. <laughs> You're funny. Um, I thought you were an Egyptian god. I am an Egyptian god, so shush. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, just one I'm going to brush out of the way first, because I thought they were interesting, but they don't really have anything to do with the the bloodline that I'm going to be going down today, mm-hmm. but was Thoth. Who? Thoth is the god of knowledge and wisdom. Um... He blessed the Egyptians with writing, medicine, and mathematics. So it's his fault for math these days. Fucking algebra. Um, he was also known as the god of the moon. And he is portrayed as a human body with an ibis head. Also known as the bin chicken. 
Yay, bin chicken god. <laughs> um, but in <laughs> as a full animal, he was portrayed as a baboon, which I don't quite understand the the line between an ibis and a baboon. But I'm sure there's a reason. <laughs> well, I know if I was an ibis, I would kill myself. Props to whoever knows that reference. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, so we will also talk about Ra, which is one that I'm sure everyone kind of knows. The, the sun. The god of the sun. Um, but he's known as the hidden one. Um, so Ra's job in the realm of the gods was to move the sun across the sky. So him and his, I'm not going to say pet, but he would Familiar? Cut, Hmm? Uh, is familiar? Well, let's roll with familiar. I feel like it's a nicer term. But, so, there's two different ways that people say it. Is that Ra drags the sun across the sky from dusk till dawn, or it's rolled across the sky by a giant scarab or dung beetle. So, essentially, the sun is a big ball of poo. The one that he dragged across the sky, he did that with a chariot or something, didn't he? Mm-hmm. I think I've seen references to that before. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I've seen images of the scarab rolling the sun before in hieroglyphics. Yes, yes. So that's just a normal day. That's morning to night. Ra moves the sun. I think over the sun is a giant ball of shit based on twenty twenty. I could believe it right now. So Ra is a human body with a hawk head. Also like Horus, who you're talking about. Yeah. So the common Egyptian eye that everyone always sees, depending on whether it's facing left or facing right, is the eye of Horus or the eye of Ra. I've seen the eye of Ra everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's a very common thing. And I know that when a lot of people get the tattoo of eye of Ra mm-hmm. as a sign to keep moving forward yep. and things like that, because it's a sign of positivity. Yep, so like the sun always moves forward, so it's, it, it helps, I don't know, it's a motivational thing to help. Like the semicolon. Yeah, the semicolon, always push forward. Um, so Ra was one of those gods who did the fusion heart at <laughs> one point in Egyptian history, um, and he merged with Amun, so therefore making Amun-Ra. And Amun is the one something to do with the Book of the Dead, yes. isn't he? So he's one of the many children of the offspring of Osiris mm-hmm. and Isis, and and so it just it trickles down to... And was Amun the one who betrayed Osiris and went to set? Um, it's speculated, yes. Okay. It's... But also, <laughs> at the end of the day, they... They like to say that Set acted alone in the betrayal of Osiris, but also it comes down to what you hear, what you read, and what you believe. I mean, every religion has its different stories. Interpretation. Everything like that. That's how cults form. Cults. <laughs> See, I know mainly about the dead Egyptian gods, the ones who are dead or associated with evil. So I and I know the basics of them from pop yeah. culture. So I can I can fill you in a bit more about that yeah. as we go down the line. But so Ra is probably if you had to label God as an Egyptian god, it would probably be Ra. Because he has been said to have created all forms of life and is the supreme ruler of all of the gods. So Given that he moves the sun across the sky, the sun gives life to plants and helps them grow, so therefore Ra is the god of life bringing, if that makes sense. And there's more Ra temples, isn't there? There's Mm -hmm. a few of them. Yeah. So it depended on regions, I guess, of, and it would depend on the individual pharaoh's beliefs as to what god they erected a temple for. Because they had, like, all the different periods and dynasties and things like that. So many. See, I wanted to do 
ancient history at school, but it collided with biology, so I had to pick between science or history. So I had to go uh, science. See, so, and, um, with the Egyptian gods, everyone, one of the main things people have asked me are, why do they all have animal heads? Why is that? And so, like the Bible, there's Mary, John, whatever, like, there's people, yeah. but the Egyptians make it a bit more literal for the, the slow people in the back. So, so you. <laughs> by giving people a feature of an animal, it helps you, without reading about them, know the kinds of personalities that those gods had. Whereas if they had the head of a hawk, they're sharp, they're smart, they're fast. Whereas if they had a head of a hippo, they were slow, they were... There's a hippo head one? Lazy. There is. There is. Um, she's the goddess of fertility. Oh, I think I've seen that before. Um, I know there's a crocodile head one. Yeah, so her name's and... Tarawet. She is a hippo-headed deity who presided over f- fertility and childbirth. So she was... I've seen... Yes, I've seen that one, the Temple of Birthing. Yeah. I've seen that reference in a video game. I don't know which one, though. Probably Tomb Raider. Seems like a Tomb Raider kind of thing. Yeah, Tomb Raider does delve a lot into the Egyptian stuff. Yeah. But also, a lot of games and yeah. common shows are just like, oh, this is a scary Egyptian thing. Yeah. I know they did it a few times on Buffy, but the god was trying to avenge or fix something that went wrong. Yeah. See, um, growing up with that, it, the most culturally mm, respectful, the, the most enjoyable to watch because it was kind of really by the book was a show that was on ABC when I was a kid. and It was little King Tut, but it was a zombie. <sighs> Oh, I... Yes. Tuttenstein. Yes, I think I've seen the and intro like, to that. all the gods that they do put in the show look and act exactly how I would envision from what I've read. Um, I, I thought it was funny. I mean, a lot of my stuff about Egyptian gods came from Stargate. Mm-hmm. Because they use it a lot, and I think that's what spanned a little bit in my interest, like that ancient alien kind of because we all know the ancient alien theories and Egypt are all <laughs> um, crazy yeah. hair aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so they um they yeah they'll put animal features on a person to give them that. Like you know about Anubis. <laughs> Anubis has the head of a jackal, yeah. which is commonly affiliated with death or necrosis or yeah. stuff like that. So Anubis is the god of mummification and the afterlife yeah so he's like the god of the dead essentially um and that's kind of why i love egyptian mythology as well is because there is a god for everything yeah there's not one god that does everything there's a god for knowledge there's a god for the dead there's a god for life there's a god for birth there's a god for wiping your ass like there's a god for everything like how i love the egyptian gods uh, not the Egyptian, the Greek gods for the same reason. Yeah. So. So Ra is the head god, basically. Essentially. So Ra the sun is god. Because the sun rules over everything. Yeah, the sun touches everything and brings life to everything. Everything the light touches. <laughs> Don't go to that shady place. <laughs> That's Australia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. But. In saying that, there's a lot of double ups with gods as well. So while Ra is the god of the sun and the god of life, Osiris, the next god we're going to talk about, is the god of the living. So he, well, the king of the living, sorry. Osiris was the ruler of the underworld and god of the dead. He was the husband of Isis. And the father of Horus. Yay! Osiris was drawn... So he's depicted as a green-skinned man who's wrapped up with feathers in his hair. Yeah. So he 
he represents life and growth, which doesn't make sense because when you do look him up, his label does the king of the dead. Uh, king of the living, but ruler of the dead. Oh, I saw Set was the ruler of the dead. No, so Set is Osiris' brother, and Set is the god of war and chaos. Oh, see, I thought Set had something to do. Oh, that's right, Anubis joined with Set, and he developed the army of the dead. That's right. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Kind of. It gets very choppy Game of Thrones. Very choppy. Shame. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> so, with this... If I end up walking thing, naked down the street because I'm worried about the Egyptian gods, I'm blaming you. Yeah, well, I can't, I can't be held responsible for that. <laughs> um, so, Isis is the wife of Osiris. She is the mother goddess. She is known to protect and help the people in need, and she is drawn as a woman, a human woman, with a headdress in the shape of a throne. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, so um, that in itself just reads, like, royalty, regalness to me. Um, but they had a son, Horace. Horace Jr., or the small Horace, because there are two, who, which I'm pretty sure... Horus Senior was the uncle of Osiris, but like I said, it's a very, very messy tree. Everyone has sex with everyone, and everyone procreates well, with everyone. Isn't there something about Osiris's penis getting eaten by something in the river? Osiris? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so that was one of the doings of Seth. Okay. <laughs> His brother. Um. So... Um, Horus is the god of vengeance, is the god of the sky, Horus is the son of Isis and Osiris, and he is also drawn to be a man's body with a hawk head. Is that a falcon head? No, Ra is the falcon. Okay. Um, they all get so confusing they for do. me. And there's so many with similar heads with slight variations. Yeah. Um, so Horus became the ruler of the Egyptians. Um, the pharaohs, so this is where it blurs the line between what people would believe in and what people did. So the pharaohs were the only physical beings to be able to communicate with the gods. So they're like priests. Yeah, but see, that's like with kings and queens across all regions they were selected by the gods and communicated with the gods. Yeah. Except for the Pope. The Pope is elected by the people to speak to God. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the Pharaoh was always rumoured to be a living version of Horus. So Is that why they always wore like the headpiece similar to Horus's? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly it. <laughs> um so I'm they learning. they were physical <laughs> representations of the gods. So Horus is the son of Isis and Osiris. Mm -hmm. But then, this is where it starts to get complicated. Oh, you thought it was complicated already? No. Well, all I know is Horus was born after Osiris was, was dead and his mother impregnated him, impregnated herself like an octopus with a tentacle. <laughs> that's <laughs> tentacle penis, that's all I basically know. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> to yes. put it lightly. Osiris? Yes. Was married to Isis. Mm-hmm. Set is Osiris's brother. Yeah. Who was married to Nephthys. Yes. Who was also Osiris's sister. Okay. So Set had Nephthys as his sister wife. Okay. Hence inbreeding. Um but Nephthys disguised herself as Isis and slept with Osiris, therefore, what's the word? Impregnating her? No. Conceiving. Conceive, therefore conceiving Anubis. 
So Anubis was not was Osiris's son as well. Yeah. Um, this infuriated Seth because his sister wife was having a child to somebody else. Having a child to his brother. Yes. Yes. It, it's very overlappy and very, very complicated mess. So is that why Set killed Osiris? Yeah. So Set is the god of war and chaos. I can he... imagine that was a bit chaotic. <laughs> yeah. Um, he resembled... So at the time, it was very... Ambivocal? Very difficult to pinpoint him because no one really liked Set. No one wanted to put their energy into Set. Um, so he's often portrayed as a weird mix between creatures, often resembling like an aardvark, but also looking like a wet dog or a donkey. So it's I know very... a few queens who look like that. <laughs> we all know a few queens who look like that. Me included. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a very unpleasant god to look at because no one's going to want to worship a, an aardvark that no one knows what it is. I feel drawn to sex. Yeah, right? right? I feel like he's kind of relatable and his actions are justified. He... Oh, I've just um, had a mind blank. That's so, not unusual. <laughs> so he's the brother of Osiris and Isis and Nephthys and and the brother of Horus the Elder. So the old Horus, not his yeah. nephew Horus. <laughs> it's a mess. Bro, yep. it's a mess. Yep, I'm trying to draw a family tree in my head. And that's... And yeah, I tried to physically draw one and I couldn't. To help you with it, but I just couldn't do it. Um, and he's the brother husband to Nephthys. All these goddamn animal <laughs> wannabe thingies. I don't know, I'm so lost. So he also, we talked about it before, Tarawet, the hippo goddess. Yeah. He was also having sex with her on the side. But I mean, she sounds like a nympho. <laughs> yeah, well, she's, she's the goddess, the goddess of, of fertility and sex. I would hope that she is. So, Set murdered Osiris after he impregnated Nephthys with Anubis. So, he threw this huge, huge party banquet um, and had a big coffin set up in the middle of the room that he got um, people to lie in as, like, a gimmick. Hello, Red Wedding. <laughs> it's very Red Wedding. I'm getting Red Wedding vibes here. Is, 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 now you've said it, it's very Red Wedding. So everyone's trying out this coffin and having a laugh and enjoying the banquet. And then Osiris lies into the coffin. <laughs> yes, there's a pregnant woman. There's, it's very Red Wedding. It's all I'm picturing in my head. But instead, when Osiris climbed into the coffin, Seth's armed men nailed the coffin shut with stone, and threw it in the Nile Delta. I thought they cut up his body. That is a... I another guess, interpretation. Again, that's another interpretation. So before that, um, they had disfigured him and then threw his body into the Nile River Delta. So it, it comes down to which story you read. Because yeah, the one I know is Horace was born to Isis. After, after the death by her, like, making a zombie yeah. Osiris. So, but couldn't find the penis, so they made a magic penis that yeah. she inserted so to make. that comes after he was thrown in the river. Oh, God. <laughs> so, essentially, Osiris is Lady Stoneheart in Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's exactly what so I'm picturing. Set threw him in this stone coffin into the river and sunk to the bottom and died. Vala Magulis. Vala Magulis. Yes, and so after that is when Isis somehow got his corpse out of the river and created Horus. <laughs> Probably so, helped with the hippo woman, because hippo, Nile. 
the yeah. crocodile one probably went hunting for the penis that got eaten by some. Probably have a little crab like the crabs out of Finding Nemo. Mine, <laughs> mine. mine. No, that's the seagull. They go mine. They're fighting over the shit out yeah. of the sewer pipe. Yeah. The crab probably ate the penis. Probably. So that's where Horace falls into the timeline. So it, like I said, it's a big loop. It it doesn't make much sense. That um, is making a bit of a bit a bit. But so everyone was shocked by this, but also didn't do anything. So Scar just killed Mufasa, and no one did anything. I mean, <laughs> you'll never go hungry again. Yeah. Um. But <laughs> Neptis gives birth to the sun, and therefore Anubis is born. Yay. Um. And like you said before, Anubis. Followed Set and became the god of the underworld and the god of death and the god of mummification because he didn't know what happened before his birth. So, is that why the four main canopic jars are Anubis, Horus, Osiris, and Isis? Yes. Ah, yeah. Because I know that the genitals, like the uterus, the testicles, and all that, would go in the Isis. Yes. Jar. Yes. Because to do with. The penis. Birth, that's um, why I knew she was that. She the bit. mother god. Yep. 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 So that's exactly it. Look, ah, it's nice stuff. I know about mummification. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Anubis was born, and I'm not gonna say served, but also kind of sided with Set because he didn't know the history. Okay. Yeah. But wasn't there another child that they had that they drowned in the river? Um, there's a lot of children who drown in the river in Egyptian mythology. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, look, I just know Jesus has apparently floated down that river. Yeah. But didn't drown like an Egyptian god baby. So, Set being the god of, um, war and chaos, then kind of employed Anubis to be the god of death, the guide of death, and lead the dead through the underworld. What? Oh, no. And he is also known as the guardian, the guardian of the scales, instead of saying mummification. So Anubis's job, other than mummifying and preparing the body, would be weighing a person's heart and soul to see if they're worthy to cross the underworld. Because I know there was a fairy person. Yes. Like in Greek gods, they have a fairy person as yeah. well. It started with I or something. Um, so it was kind of Anubis' job also, but in saying that Anubis had a lot of assistance. Like little demony things. Little demony things doing little that minions. with him. Um Banana. so once a life was um put on the scales, a heart and a soul, to see if it was worthy enough to go or to cross mm. The underworld. Yeah, because the heart always went in the Anubis comic jar. Yes. Yes. Um, and something that I find really interesting is that a lot of people affiliate um, Anubis with evil. Yes, but it's not evil. It's because people inherently think anything dead is evil. Yeah. Like, I, you know me, I have this thing that I think dead and the deaf should be respected more than life. Yeah. Like, the dead is always seen as something morbid and horrible and something that we should fear and be upset by, when I feel it should be the complete opposite. We should embrace death for what it is, because everything has its cycle, and we must appreciate that and respect the dead, because we shouldn't speak ill of the dead, we shouldn't for kill of the dead. Yeah. Um, but no, Anubis was not evil. I guess if you wanted to label someone as evil, it would be set. But also, everyone is the villain in someone's story. Yeah. So, um, when and that's the thing, and it comes down to any religion. Mm. So in Christianity, Satan is the, the bad guy. To me, Satan evil. wasn't the bad guy, because Satan fought for equality. He did, and he gave people choices. Yeah. That choice would determine whether it was a good or a bad choice. Yeah. He didn't do it. Um, but yeah, so it's the same with Anubis. Yeah. Because he is a face for it. And he guarded the Book of the Dead that had all the names of the dead. Yeah. In it. 
Exactly. So he was the secretary of death. Yay! <laughs> but he was not That would be evil. my job. <laughs> he was not evil. No. Um... While we are on the topic of Anubis, do you want to talk us through some fun mummifications? <sighs> okay. So for people who don't know, I originally started a forensic anthropology degree at uni, but left it because I couldn't do four hours travel every day to go to a university oh. to do it. So we learned about like mummification process. Well, that mummification is basically... The true definition of mummification is the drying out and desica- or desiccation of a corpse over a period of time in a ritualistic way. Yeah. Because people could be mummified in, like, you can find people in drywall that have been mummified. Yeah. You can find bodies that have been in the desert that have been sandblasted or dried in the desert. Mm-hmm. And then you've got Egyptian mummification, which is... you got... There's various types of that where you would have, like, the pharaohs got, like, the full-on priests wearing the Anubis heads, filling mm-hmm. the body with myrrh, removing yeah. part of the brain through the nose and things like that. But it wasn't just exclusive to the pharaoh. And that's exactly it too. Like, just on that quick yeah. note, it was only a part of the brain. Yeah. So it it's a myth lobe. that they pulled your whole brain yeah. out through your nose. It was just the frontal lobe. Like as we see at the frontal lobe. Yeah. And when they do CTs of bodies and of mum by bodies from Egypt and that it shows that yeah and it was that was mainly reserved for the priests or the really rich like the poor would just have their like thoracic cavity emptied of yeah. the lungs the heart and then they'd be stuffed with the poor got sawdust yeah and sand if they were lucky then you'd have ones who would have like myrrh frankincense like herbs and that and it wasn't that they were purity things, it's just they were making pot purity to go in the body to try and help mask the sense yeah. of like decay because even though you're drying out the body over the period of time in the special mummification rooms, there's a name for them and it's escaping me right now, where they would do it was a very dry, humid, humidless environment so that the bodies would dry out. And it was a bit of a process. It wasn't just like you see in the movies one or two days. Yeah, no. It was it like took, over a couple of weeks to months, it depending. Took, yes, it did. It took weeks. Like mummification is a very long, complicated process, and with like the pharaohs, when they would wrap the bodies, they would put tokens and things like unks and that wrapped in the bandages, and then the bandages would have spells and ritual words and that written on them to help guide them and help the gods make the right decision. Like, it was very complicated and ritualistic process. And they would rub the body in salts and oils to help, like, the desiccation process. So, like, when you put a jacket potato in the oven, you wash it, you dry it, you rub it in oil, cover it in salt, and you put it in the oven to dry out the skin and cook the inside. And, like, because they removed all the internal viscera, like, the heat travelling through the body and that would help desiccated from the inside out. Yeah. Fun fact, a desiccated human body can be, so say it's a finger or something like that of the dead that's being desiccated, you can hydrate it using chemical similar to fabric softeners, oh. hydrate it for it doesn't last long, but enough to get a fingerprint of the dead body. Wow, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so you're saying they put tokens in the bodies, yeah. um, so such as um, which yes. is a very, um, um, a very um, overused symbol from Egypt that yes. people are like, oh, that's an Egyptian thing. It was created in Africa. Yes, but um, Egypt is in Africa. It is, but it was. <laughs> it came from other people. Yeah, it's been used everywhere. Yeah. Um. So, do you know what that unk represents? Suppose so. From what I know, it's meant to. Like life and fertility. Yeah. So, um, the ankh is also known as like the key of life. Yeah. So, which is why they would put it on a body, so you had a key to get into the underworld, yeah. or to the key of the Nile to go down the river of life. And then it also depended on the dynasty, the different heads, like on the canopic jars, and mm-hmm. what parts they put in there. 
So I know with some of the later ones, they didn't put the heart. The heart was left yeah. in the body, because but it was placed the in the heart. stomach. Yeah, you need the heart to be judged to get into the afterlife. Yeah. Which is something that they added later, yeah. which added a concern through a few pharaohs who were like, wait, we've been removing people's hearts this whole time. Have all these people not gotten into the afterlife? Yeah. Like, afterlife because of it? And then there was, like, how they painted the faces on top of the bandages and under the bandages Yeah, was different too because it was a common thing. People think that they wrap the whole head, while sometimes they didn't wrap the whole... Sometimes they left the head exposed. exposed. Yeah. And then other times the head was wrapped. And the exposed head, they dressed the hair and they put, like, gold weaved through it and yeah. things like that. But I think that all depended on the different dynasties and different rituals. And, yeah. And the priest would wear the Anubis head costume and, like, say the blessings and ask for the body to be added to the Book of Dead. And, yeah. And the burying of all their per like all their belongings to go to the afterlife with them was also dependent on some of them. Yeah, yeah. And fun fact, the Ankh was also kind of the original cross. So you're welcome, people. <laughs> well, Christians adapted almost all pagan things to suit their um, needs. Yeah, so... Very interesting. It is. But um, it gets very messy with these gods, though. It's yeah, so much like incest. I was saying, the the um, Lannister Game of Thrones. It was very Lannister. Um, so who would have been the Cersei? Well, <laughs> so the main nine gods that fall into this tree, um, or they're also known as the Great Enid or Enid. So the nine gods worshipped at. Helio, Helio, Heliopolis. Yes, I remember learning about Heliopolis. Heliopolis. Um, they formed the tribunal in the Osiris myth. So there's Atom, Shu, Tefnut, Geb, Nut, Osiris, Isis, Neptis, and Set. All these gods decided whether Set or Horus Senior would rule in the story and that set in set into play the contendings of the birth of Horus, um, the the murder of Osiris and stuff like that. So essentially it was who was king and like I said, Scar The Victor Wright's history. Yeah, Scar and Mufasa. <laughs> yeah. This is I, why people spend a lifetime studying Egyptian gods. Like, like, and I only know the surface of it, and I have grown up around it, learning bits and pieces here and there. Like, I remember in high school, um, when it came up to Egyptian history, my teacher, in a very passive-aggressive way, said something, and goes, but you would know all about that, wouldn't you, Lisa? <laughs> in an almost racist way. She yeah. went that I would know because of consumption. And, but did you know? Um, I did. <laughs> and then I said, actually, that's inaccurate. <laughs> You're speaking shit. So much Egyptian culture has been appropriated. Like, like I think I've watched one of the Mummy movies. And through the whole thing, I couldn't even enjoy it and get scared like other people do. Because I'm just like, that's not that's scary. Okay. Apparently they're meant to be scary. Find them funny. Yeah. I thought they were a comedy movie. <laughs> no, well, the whole scarab crawling under the skin thing. Oh, that doesn't happen. That does not happen. Scarabs don't eat flesh. No, anyway. they don't. They eat like some meat off dead things, but... Yeah, already dead, de decaying, decaying, rotting things. things. And that went into mummification as well. Like, some... Researchers said that they would fill the body with scarabs, and then others say no, when it's more likely the scarabs could sense the decaying flesh and went burrowing. Yeah, they just did it. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have cages of scarabs that they just poured into dead bodies. I mean, that could be fun. Does anyone want to volunteer for us to pour 
a cage full of scarabs into your body. And see what happens. For science. Or just lay down in a bed of scarab swaths. Mm. I'm happy either way. Yeah, as long as we can lunch. It's just like, I know with, so Stargate did really good references to Egyptian gods, like they had Ra, but Ra was one of the baddies. Ooh, and see, things like that. I've never watched Stargate because I was worried it would just be more of the it's same. It's actually really good. Like, but the question is, is it accurate? It's a different interpretation. Well, that's true. That's that's a good way of putting because it. Because the way that it interprets that there was a stargate in ancient Egypt oh. that these aliens came to, and so the aliens that inhabited went into the bodies of humans, because they're like wormy things, I can't think what they're called right now, would go into people, but they actually have the persona of those gods. Oh, I it's see. It's very interesting. I might have to look into it. It's on, I think it's on Stan, Stan Stargate. It's really good. Oh. You would actually enjoy it. There's a lot of violence in that. Stargate episode. or Stargate Atlantis? Very different series. They do cross over. They're different Stargates. And but Stargate. which one would you suggest? Start off with Stargate the movie. Okay. And then go to Stargate the series. Because okay. the series starts straight after the movie. Okay, so and it started then Stargate, with the movie. And then Stargate kind of crosses over into Farscape and things like that. It gets very interesting oh. and confusing. It's very good. Farscape was not a very long-lived show. I liked Farscape a lot. That was an Australian-Canadian okay. thing. It was very good. Yeah. So, um, if people do or don't know me well enough, I have Egyptian-themed tattoos. <gasps> Gasp! Tattoos! That giant scarab and the sun. Yeah. And so all the heads. Oh my god. No. Tell me all about them. <laughs> wow, you vindictive little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my tattoos personally tell a single story to my own. People just think that they're symbols on my hands. No, they speak a story. Like all hieroglyphs. Yeah, like all hieroglyphs. Like, starting on my thumb, we have the king, the pharaoh, and the sun. So I'm the sun, and being male, I'm the king. The ankh represents me wanting to live a good life. But the jackal, I've been surrounded by death. The scarab represents always moving forward. Seeking love, wanting to be forever happy. Without a queen, because I am gay. <gasps> oh, God! All those broken-hearted women. I'm sorry, ladies, but my heart can only belong to men. Not really. The penis I... is the key to the heart. <laughs> no, no, no. I wouldn't say that. But your heart um, doesn't have a penis-shaped keyhole. No, <laughs> penis is not a requirement. Um, and I also have the Eye of Ra on my wrist. Mm. Everyone always says, is that the Eye of Horus? No. Like I covered earlier, they're different. They yeah, mean they different are. things. Um, but yeah, and then on the top of my hand, I have a big scarab with the wings out, pushing the sun, which is eventually Pushing gonna... shit uphill. Because <laughs> <laughs> eventually... you're shit. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's very true. But... On my thumb, I have a small sun. Then on my wrist, I have a slightly bigger sun. The sun's going to get bigger as it goes up my arm to represent my growth as a human and becoming better and blah, blah, blah. Moral of the story, Scarab pushes the sun across the sky. So what about the Nefertiti on the other hand? Isn't there a Nefertiti? No. On your thumb? No. Or am I thinking of someone else? That's a sigil of Lucifer, babe. No, no, no. I always thought you had a Nefertiti somewhere. I might be thinking of someone else. No. No? Think of someone else. No, yeah. no, that has one. You have another friend with Egyptian tattoos? That's the one. Cultural appropriation. Mm. Homo homophobic. Nefertiti is homophobic? Well, not really, no. I thought Nefertiti was kind of like Cleopatra there with the beauties. No, 
the actual body of Nefertiti when they did the CT scan and they did the 3D rendering of the face was like hideous with a huge forehead. Mm. Like a lot of them because of all the inbreeding of kings and queens like everyone. That, that, that brings us to another topic of Tutankhamen. Oh, you mean hydrocephalic big head? Yeah, so one of the most commonly known pharaohs, and as we talked about before, the pharaohs are essentially the human gods of Egypt. Tutankhamun, the boy king. Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. Let's say the, the child, second. Yes, the child king. Um, the son of Ramesses, wasn't he? Yes. I don't know. There's a lot of Ramesses and a lot of Tutankhamun. There's a lot of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't They're have very names. many names. But, um, which the would be an interesting Pharaoh. topic for us to talk about in Murderers, because... Yes. They the has never been confirmed, but they think that Tutankhamun's death was not an accident, yes. considering he fell off a chariot. And also traces in the bandages of asp them to to mm-hmm. make sure that he died, because the asp was associated with set. Yep. And the venom of an asp would paralyze or keep the body basically in purgatory. Yes. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. You I, know him stuff. Again, it comes to mummification. Cuts. But yes, Tutankhamun <laughs> was very disfigured. He was very inbred. Like a lot of them. Like a lot of them. But it's like even the British royal family now, they're inbred. Yeah. Like all the kings and queens of Europe and all that are all inbred. They breed to keep their blood pure. And that's why marrying outside of the family is such a <gasps> taboo. Gasp. Taboo. Um, to boo a to baby ones. And you mentioned Cleopatra too. And Oh, I know the story of Cleopatra. Yeah, but just a little fun fact about Cleopatra that not many people know is that her, she falls in the timeline closer to our existence yes. than the erection of the pyramids. Yes. So she is like, she's a baby when it comes to this kind of Yeah, like she was around during the time history. of the Romans. Yeah. And Alexander, and that's and why they have all the story. And... Hey, she knew sex was the way to maintain power over men. So you wanted the Circe of the Egyptian world? Exactly. You got her. Yep. The best weapon is between your legs, blah, blah, blah. I mean... As she, she used it. Sex is being used as a powerful weapon. Most of, like in World War Two, most espionage was carried out by um, female agents yeah. because they could sex their way to information yeah and a lot of people don't realize that it's very interesting and i also know that um hitler had a fascination with egyptology really yes i didn't know that yes he had a complete egyptology fascination and the nazis did try mummification on some jewish individuals oh those poor souls because the nazis did lots of weird experiments yeah. on people and using human flesh and things like that. But it's interesting that we've learnt so much about the Egyptian gods because of the Rosetta Stone. Like, mm-hmm. that people go, Rosetta Stone, Digimon. No, the Rosetta Stone came before <laughs> Digimon. <laughs> Actually, wasn't that Digimon kind of like an Egyptian god sphinx? Um, yes. Nefertitimon. So- Mm, Nefertimon or something. Nefertimon. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> Digimon does look, and I, I, I am a sucker for Digimon, I love it. Um, There is a lot of parallels with Egypt in that show. Yeah. From the fact, even in season one, they walk through a desert with They pyramids. go down the river. Yeah, they go down the river. They It's, it's, it's very. Devimon Egypt. was. Yep. Set. Um, mm-hmm. That. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but I remember, I remember now Nefertimon. Yeah, Nefertimon was yeah. Catamon's yeah. weird new digi evolution. Or if you're in Australia, Gatomon. Um, but yeah, Gatomon, Gatomon, or Catamon. Like it cha- Yeah, like, I know. It's just it doesn't make much. Sense. But the Rosetta Stone to get back on topic. Yes. Is a tablet that's found that had Hebrew, mm-hmm. Egyptian and Latin and Greek on it, and they used that to be able to interpret some Egyptian hieroglyphics from that time, and then they were able to do some 
epidemiological studies that trace it back and but then things can be interpreted different ways because some of the characters are the same or similar but have weathered and you can't so you can get two different stories from the one and that is a very common case with Egyptian mythology as well because as I said there's a lot of like there's two Horuses there's two Isises like there's like, there's a lot of double-ups, whereas it's like, okay, my name is Lucy, and if someone in 10 years' time said, Lucy got her degree in law <laughs> enforcement, and if someone <laughs> said, <laughs> Lucy got her degree in art studies, it's like, okay, but what one did Lucy actually do? Neither. We know <laughs> that I don't do degrees of anything. Except for diplomas of mental health and things like that. Stuff like that. But I would never do law enforcement or art degrees. So Well interestingly enough, my when I started my um degree in forensic anthropology, it was under a Bachelor of Arts and Archaeological Sciences with a major in anthropology with a sub minor in forensics. Wow. So it was very... That's why I had to be on campus almost every single day, because nothing would line up, but it's a special one that Australian National University is the only university in Australia that does forensic um, anthropology, because there's different branches um, of anthropology. Yeah. And um, I would go back to it, but again, I'd have to travel to Canberra every single day, and that's four and a half hours round traveling for me. No, thank and you. I'm not doing that every single day. So, do you have any other questions about the gods? What was the go with the gold-tipped pyramids? Um, Why gold? So, it, it comes down to who was ruler at that time, who was the pharaoh, and what they wanted. So, it's like, some could have wanted, I want diamond crushed up in my tomb. Or I want a gold tip on my pyramid. Like it's just it comes down to personalization of that time. Yeah. So I guess gold tipped pyramids aren't any better than normal pyramids. It's just what that specific pharaoh wanted. Fair enough. I can kind of get. And then it comes down to so someone... you'd have glittered. Yeah. So mm. someone would see it and be like, oh, that one is a god's pyramid. It's not, but it everyone sees things in different ways. Hmm. Yeah. The Egyptian gods, it's interesting. We'll do a discussion on the Greek gods. Because yes. there's a lot of parallels that can be drawn. And that's why I personally feel that in this universe, it's not just one omnipotent being. Yeah. That it, there's a word for it, and I cannot... It's a poly something or other universe. Yeah. Multiple gods, multiple. That's what I feel because there's so many parallels when you go through Egypt, Greece, Roman, China, Aztec. There's so many gods that have the same parallels. It's very. Even when you compare it to some of the Australian Dreamtime stories, like we did with vampires. Yeah. Like, there's things that all correlate to each other and it make personally it makes me go well before now was the world much more magical and we've just killed it off with time mm -hmm. like the less people believe the less magic there is yeah because magic is in the heart mm -hmm. well so they say but then you look at each different the word occult for a better Phrase because occult means to be outside the norm. Yeah. Every occult version of a religion that relies on spells and magic, like voodoo, paganism, Wicca, like there's, I can't even think what the one that starts with M right now. Oh, my brain is really dying. Uh, I'm really upset that I can't remember it, and it's going to annoy me for days. When Connie remembers, we'll post it up in big bold letters on our Instagram. Yeah, like they all say that magic has to come from within 
and the different ways that you do things is dependent on which god has its focus on that and hence why they all like voodooism when we talk about that like Mm -hmm. you'll see that they use a lot of christian saints and that more than what people people think voodoo oh cut the head off a chicken that's all it is when their their spells and curses and that are based on a prayer it's the same as a prayer to a saint or to yep. God in Catholicism. Very much so. Or when we talk about like Wiccan stuff, like the way we do things is different to Christians, but it's no different to what the Greeks and that did what our spells and that are no different to a prayer and yeah. things like that. It's very... There's a lot of parallels with a lot of different things. Yeah. And it's very interesting when you look at the Mormon draw, and that's what drew me to anthropology originally, was, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. there's so many different things to do with the evolution of society and societal norms and mores and things like that. Mm-hmm. I love it. Awesome. It, it all intrigues me, hence why I love our little podcast. Our and, little and, podcast. and we hope you all love it too. Yeah, and if you don't, well, you, why are you still listening? Yeah. So if you do like it, please hit subscribe on whatever service you're using, because that'll help us keep going. And we are open to suggestions and feedback. If you have any specific topics you'd like us to research and talk about, mm-hmm. inbox us, um, comment. On Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, all under at Drag to Hell. Yeah. It's a, we keep it all very simple. And we're ha- happy to have collaborations with people if they wish to talk to us and educate us more. And if we said something that you believe is wrong, let us know too, because we're all happy to correct ourselves. Yeah. And the more we learn, the, be- the more we grow. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's all about growth. And we all follow each other, hence why we should all... Drink the, the Kool Aid. So, I want to pose a challenge to people on Instagram. Given we've been talking about, cue the word, and um, um I can't and proper more than that. So, if <laughs> you were Egyptian, if you were an Egyptian god, what would you be the Egyptian god of, and what? Animal traits would you have on your body? I know we're probably going to get a lot of like so you furries. Mean, we're not talking furries or animals because you're in. A, I think there was Egyptian references in animals. I too. never watched it. I never watched probably. it. I read it. Probably. I think there was some references to some, the weird alien thing. I think suggests you know when they oh, first the blue horse thing, the centaur looking. Yeah, thing. I think it mentions that it first met up with the ancient Egyptians. Or oh, but see, again, we're going to this ancient alien stuff, which mm-hmm. if people want to hear about some ancient alien conspiracy theories or theories and that, let us know, because I have a lot on those, and I find them very fascinating. And we're definitely going to be tackling those in the future, too. But I think, just remember, follow us on all social media, all under at drag to hell. Or follow us individually at underscore connie.baffery underscore on Instagram. Or at it's underscore lucy underscore fur on Instagram. And always remember, kids, no matter what, drink drink the Kool-Aid!